Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold with an extra video update for you for the US dollar yen pair aftermarket closure for 11th of January 2017. This pair is in an upward trend. Currently, it's undergoing a correction. The question is, can we use it to join the trend and when is that correction going to be over? I've got one piece of strong analysis that's going to help us there. Elliott Wave analysis first, classic technical analysis last. But along with Elliott Wave, I'll be doing volume analysis because stock charts don't give volume data for foreign currency pairs. My long-term picture back to 2012 sees from this low to this high a complete five-wave impulse and now from this high to this low a complete three-wave zigzag. And here's the risk to this wave count. Looking at the bigger picture, it is entirely possible that this zigzag is not the entirety of the second wave correction. That cycle wave two could continue even lower as a double zigzag. We'd move the degree of labelling within this first zigzag down one and label this primary W. We'd have primary X close to completion and then we'd be looking at a second zigzag for primary Y. That is entirely possible. If we get a complete five up against the direction of this three down, then I'll move the invalidation point up here. So the bigger picture still allows for new lows. Cycle 2 can't move beyond the start of 1 below 75.573. Let's look at the structure of cycle 2 at the weekly chart level where cycle 1 has the high up here. Here's a problem with the wave count. No rules are violated nor are any guidelines. It just looks a little bit odd. We've got a very short A wave B is an expanded flat and C is remarkably long in comparison to A. But all of the subdivisions fit and there's a couple of neat structures in here. I think this is the right wave count. A and C waves most commonly tend to equality but that's not a rule. They don't have to be equal and they are quite often not equal. But in this case they are unusually unequal. That's okay, all the structures fit. Within the C wave, we've got a neat little triangle here for a fourth wave and an ending expanding diagonal here for a fifth wave. So if there's a triangle here, then a third wave has to have ended down here. And this fourth wave does not overlap first wave price territory. All rules are met. If we accept that there's a triangle here and a third wave has ended here and we want to try and count this movement here as a five, and not a three, then it just won't work if you have a triangle here. And so that's why I've labelled it as a zigzag. I've tried to see if this could be a five wave impulse and it just won't fit. Well, I haven't been able to find a solution yet anyway. From this low on up, I'd be expecting a five up in the main direction of the even larger trend for a third wave. Cycle 3 will equal 1.618 times the length of cycle 1 at 180.43. Within this third wave, we still don't have the first wave up complete. Within this upward movement, I cannot yet see a complete five wave impulse. When primary 1 is complete, and it's not done yet, but when it is, maybe in several weeks to a couple of months or so, then I'll be looking for a multi-month deep correction for primary 2, which may not move beyond the start of 1 below 99. 0.075. At the beginning of this movement, as price started to move up, we saw some increase in volume and then volume started to, it was still heavy, but it did taper off toward the end of this upward movement. That's absolutely normal for the end of a wave, for volume to decline toward the end. And now we've got a more deeper correction. Let's have a look at the structure on the daily chart where cycle 2 ends down here, this point here. So far within primary 1 we've got intermediate 1, 2 and the impulse for intermediate 3 is incomplete. Within it we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 and the final fifth wave may be beginning about here. If minor wave 4 moves any lower then this target must also move correspondingly lower. So this target is based on upward movement beginning right here. The strongest piece of analysis on all of these charts is the cyan trend line. I've drawn it from this low here to this low. This chart is on a semi-log scale and I've extended it on out. It was broken through here strongly. Price came up to back test pretty close to that line, moved down and away. Another back test very close to the line with a small overshoot, moved down and away. Broke through here with some resistance as it did so moved up and away and it's coming back down, is it going to come down and touch this line or with a small overshoot like we had an overshoot here 
and we had an overshoot here. At this stage, at this low for today, there is nothing to tell me that downward movement is over and there is everything to tell me it's quite likely it could continue for another couple or so days and if it does I'll be looking for it to find very strong support at this cyan trend line possibly with a small overshoot so about this trend line if that's how price behaves particularly if we see one of two things a downward day with a very strong increase in volume like a selling climax like we had on this day here with a strong increase in volume then I'd expect we've got a low in place or it could just be a downward day with some increase in volume like we have for today but I am a bit concerned that these three days of downward movement come with some increase in volume and so the fallen price has support for volume there's no candlestick reversal pattern at the low here this candlestick has nearly even upper and lower wicks there's nothing bullish about this at all and we haven't quite found support at the cyan trend line Minor wave 4 most certainly could continue lower and it can't move into wave 1 price territory below 104.315. I have two golden rules for trading and they're absolutely important. They're both to do with risk management. Risk management is the most often overlooked aspect of trading by those new to trading and it's the biggest reason why pretty much everyone at the beginning of their trading career will wipe out their account at least once or twice they just don't pay enough attention to managing risk i cannot stress how important this is my two golden rules first rule always use a stop second rule never invest any more than three to five percent of your equity and preferably even less one or two percent is more conservative and safer on any one trade always use a stop no more than three to five percent of equity if you can manage to keep to those two rules you'll probably be doing quite well I'm going to be watching this pair carefully and looking to see if price comes down to touch the cyan line in the next couple of days if it does that I want to set my stop a little ways below that to allow for overshoots this line it's not perfect it certainly could be overshoot but I will be expecting support very close to this line so I'll be setting my stop a little way below there not all the way down here at the invalidation point because that's too risky I'll be limiting my trade to probably about two to three percent of my equity in my account for this one trade Let's have a look at some classic analysis and see, apart from volume, which I've already tried to go over, let's have a look and see if the Elliott wave count is supported or not. At this high here, there was some divergence between price and RSI, and so that supports the wave count. This does see this as the end of a third wave, so we had three, four, and this was a fifth wave. So this fifth wave showed some divergence with price and RSI. That's normal. RSI is now below 50 so it's in bearish territory price has been falling along with rising volume for these last three days so there's support for the fallen price at the high ADX was very extreme extreme is considered above 35 this time it reached above 40 so that's very extreme and the black ADX line was above both directional lines it's still above both directional lines it's now declining telling us the market is not trending it's consolidating we have a possible trend change but when the price is consolidating the positive and negative DX lines can whipsaw about each other for a while so that's not conclusive it's telling us of a potential trend change but because the black ADX line is still declining it tells us the market is still consolidating and not yet possibly in a new downward trend but along with rising volume we've got rising ATR as price is moving lower range is increasing now that tells us that this downward movement has support from volume and there's some internal strength each day the bears are able to push price in a greater and greater range as ATR increases so that's another warning that the downward movement may not be over may continue for a few more days I'll be using stochastics as well as that cyan trend line if stochastics can reach oversold and at the same time price finds support on that cyan line if it doesn't find support there then I'll be looking next for the Fibonacci 55 day moving average if that's what happens either of those lines and stochastics is oversold I'll be looking also at volume if it shows a decline and lack of support for downward movement I'll 
expect we might have a low in place or if price touches that cyan line and starts to move up and away then I'll enter long. So I'm going to be watching this pair carefully in the next few days for an opportunity to join that upward trend. There's still room for it to move and it still needs to complete the Elliott Wave structure so I expect it's not done yet. That's all from me with your extra video update for this pair. If you're looking for daily gold analysis you'll find it on my website Elliott Wave Gold where I also analyse silver and US oil once a week.